Hey there, everybody. Welcome to WIC Live, WIC Wednesday. I'm Kayla Canaram alongside Dan Selke. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day, Kayla. How are you? Good. How are you, Dan? I'm doing really well. Are you having a good Valentine's Day? Good so far, yeah. Michelle, our uh, new editor, brought us all Valentine's. That was really sweet. That was delightful. And Thank candy. you very much, Michelle. <laughs> oh, we're not there. So have a nice Valentine's Day. If you want to watch him, we are taking your comments and questions live. And we're going to talk about all things Game of Thrones, Song of Ice and Fire. Westeros is a hard place for Valentine's. Love doesn't go terribly well there. No, people die, not. people get betrayed. I was, I was looking it over. Uh, most of the relationships just end terribly. We got <laughs> people like Shay, Ygritte, we got Cal Drogo, we got Littlefinger, we got everybody ends up dead. Unless you're Sam and Gilly, then you might be okay. This is really depressing to talk about on Valentine's Day. I know, I'm a downer. Okay. <laughs> Why Let's get we, into we then. We should have done a wine day. We really should have. This oh, would well, be, be a good day for wine. <laughs> We're going to start things off today with some fresh Game of Thrones spoilers for Season 8 because they keep on coming pretty quickly, Kayla. They do. All right. So I think the last time we met, it was last Wednesday, we talked about seeing Kit Harington, Jon Snow, in um, Dubrovnik yep. in Croatia. You know that Jon Snow's going to get to King's Landing in sometime in Season 8. Very interesting. Hmm. Okay. N not a day after that. <laughs> of course. Or like, yeah, there was the next day, some new pictures emerged of them filming at a place in Dubrovnik called um, the Minketa Tower, which I'm going to say, that's how you pronounce it. And we got one of our first looks of Lena Headey as Cersei Lannister dressed up in her finery. What do you think of, like, her new, she's in, as always, Cersei has a new fashion statement to make. What do you think of her new outfit here? Um... Well, Dan, I know you said the shoulder pads remind you of a cheese grate, and I couldn't agree more. A little bit. Like don't an they kind old time of? washboard or something. Yes. Yeah. They're functional as well as terrifying. It looks like she could just like lean into someone and murder them with her shoulders. I like. I mean, she's. They, they, I love the costume design in the show. I always have. I've always thought it's very elaborate, very florid, very interesting to look at, and great for cosplay. I, I will say, I, I feel like with Cersei especially, they always dress her so. Opulently, mm -hmm. and she's been deep into the blacks for the past for the past season. The color of her heart. Exactly, but almost now it almost looks like it's going science fiction to me a little bit. You think? Do you see what I'm saying? I like, like the it, necklace. Oh, I see. I have something here, similar. Here, here's my conflict. I love it. Like I really do love it. I love the the, the drama of it. I it love looks, the cheese. It looks more like a man's soldier outfit, kind of. No. A little bit. I can't see a man wearing the kind of elaborate shoulder pads. She and just looks like she's more ready for battle than anything. It does. She looks like she's for business. She has a collar on. <laughs> but it looks like with, with the cheese grit and shoulder pads and the weird kind of kind of pattern on the front, it looks it looks less like something someone in that time would actually wear. Oh. So which, that's your beef with it. I mean, if, if you want to call it a beef, I still think it looks really fun. But it's almost like... Is the rest of it velvet? I can't tell. The rest of it is black. That's all I know. Okay. Shades of black. It's really cool. I just, it's starting to seem like they've like designed every medieval outfit they can and now they're like, let's just borrow from Star Wars. <laughs> oh, you think it has a Star Wars feel? I think it has a super villainous feel to it. And I'm okay with it. If you guys have any thoughts on that, love to know. What do you think of Cersei's new duds? Oh, there's other comments. Hello. Hello, everybody. <laughs> I was looking over here. Hi, Julie. Hi, Daniel. Hey, Leanne. And yes, looks like cheese critters and her shoulders. I agree, Leanne, that's what I was thinking. But no, it definitely makes a statement, as it always does with her. But the biggest news, actually, out of this shot wasn't the fact that uh, there's Lena Haiti in her new outfit. It was who she was talking to. So they're filming at this t place, the Minsketa Tower, Minsetta Tower, I don't know. And they're filming. Can you say that five times fast? Minsetta Tower, Minsetta Tower, Minsetta Tower, Minsetta Tower, Minsetta Tower. Oh, good job. Um, thank you. They're filming through this window, and we can see, like, everything. We were seeing half Thor Julius Bjornsson, who plays the mountain mm -hmm. through that window. We saw Dan Weiss, producer. And most notably, we saw Kit Harrington and Lena Headey in the same scene, both in costume on the same set. Oh, We have a little photo of that. G. It's definitely an OMG moment. So Cersei and Jon Snow together chatting up a storm. Did I call that last something. week? I mean, I, 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 I don't think we it's terribly surprising. Yeah, I feel like we threw out a bunch of options, and that may have been one of them. I mean, because he was in King's Landing, Jon Snow. That's yes. where Cersei lives, so it makes sense they'd meet. But seeing them together, I mean, they, they've never shared a one-on-one -on -one scene before. Which, again, eight years in, man. <laughs> These two main characters have never big. been together. It's, it's, it's cool because it's just, I love that they've, it took this long for it to happen. Mm -hmm. I like that. Um, what do you think, Kayla? 
Jon Snow and Cersei are going to have to talk about. Okay, what did we see that was um, on fire last week? That was Westeros. Last week. Right? Um, this is, again, big spoilers. Last week we saw Winterfell on fire. Winterfell. That's what I meant. It's just rough, man. So possibly, like, something along with that? Aftermath of the fire? Yes, something like that. <laughs> That could have been caused by dragons? The way I figure it is, maybe Winterfell gets lit on fire, Jon Snow loses whatever battle he's fighting, he flees down to King's Landing and has to beg Cersei for help. That kind of thing. Or she's taken him prisoner, that's possible too. Oh, I didn't think of that. I hope that's not the case. I'm he wouldn't let that happen. He'll be, well, he wouldn't let that happen? I don't know. <laughs> he, he let himself get murdered. He, um, yeah, that was a big one. He let himself get killed. Right. So he, he, he can make mistakes. Can you come back to life twice, do we think? He, is that I just mean, like a one-time deal? He, I mean, they can do whatever they want. It's a fantasy show. <laughs> um, I, I think it would be a little cheap. <laughs> Although there is the one guy with the eye patch who's been back like seven times. I think resurrection should be used very sparingly in a, uh, any universe. Like, maybe once and you're good. Agreed. Otherwise, you risk uh, off-putting people who are just like, really, well, what's the point of death anymore? So what do you think this is? Does it have something to do with dragons? Um, I think it's probably him begging for help. But I'm excited to find out. I'm excited to see what Lena Headey can do in situation. Cause she, I always love the way she acts. I love her reactions. I love her uh, resting bitch face, if you want to call it that. And I'm looking forward to seeing them play off each other. Okay. What would do it, you guys would think Would it have it to do with the possible offspring? Of who? Uh, the love child between Daenerys and Jon Snow. How, how so? I don't know. I'm just throwing that out there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that. Oh, okay. Gotcha. I've been handed a note to um, make sure that my microphone picks up the audio correctly. I will endeavor to do that. <laughs> I am? Oh. What's in my pocket? <laughs> what? Okay. Oh, Dan, never a dull moment with you. <laughs> no. Okay. How's that? <laughs> Anyway, so that's happening. Roger Blackmore, thing with the woman's <laughs> armor to me. Very interesting. <laughs> what? Well, you, you, you get everything here. This you is do. a full service kind of show. Drills again. Anything can happen. It's live, people. See? Michelle thinks Dan is, oh, Michelle Burton. Burton. Dan is delightful. Well, that's a little biased, but I take it. <laughs> She's the one that gave us Valentine's. Right. <laughs> Anywho, that's happening. Um, there's one other little spoiler I want to get to before we move on to the next part of our program. And that's, okay, so I discovered this and I was very proud of myself. And this was picked up by some other outlets and stuff. Okay, I was listening to one of the commentaries on the season seven Blu-ray box set. And uh, some of the producers. You would. Do you watch all the special I have to. Features? I have to write about them. Oh, that's true. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, I might do it anyway, but I, I had to do it in this case. Okay. Um, remember that kind of bitchin' room that Cersei had made <laughs> with the giant map of Westeros from the floor that's from one last way year? Of describing it, yes. I love they that They used room. it a lot. Yeah. I mean, for like pictures and like. I mean, it's so graphic. It's so cool. It's it was so pretty, yeah. I mean, it's so it's like instantly iconic, just because. It know, was a big part of the, the whole show. Is about trailer. trying to take over the continent. Why not have a giant map of it somewhere right. so you could just orient the audience? It's a really good idea, and I want it on my kitchen. Um, but the point was, during the commentary, people were they were talking about how that set was built specifically to look like it's outdoors, even though it's on an indoor set, obviously, because apparently they have to have a shot next season where we can see the sky from it. Dragons. That's got to be it, right? Has to. So it's just like, what was so important they built a set around the idea of seeing the sky because they know something important has to happen. That's, that's got to be it. Dragons flying, fire breathing down. I'm calling it like Cersei's like out flames. there twiddling her thumb. She looks up and it's like, oh, crap. Like, <laughs> see some dragons go overhead. Maybe one like perches there and tries to fry her. There's no other explanation. And some people have suggested snow, that snow has to fall through so we can like carpet the area. But wouldn't we just, wouldn't need to see the sky for that. Right. So I think it's gotta be dragons. Anybody out there have an idea about the map room or want it in what areas of, of their house? Beard interference, says Leanne, uh, in relation to my uh, audio problems. Nope, just the microphone sitting on it wrong. That's what happens sometimes. <laughs> Technical difficulties. <sighs> So in the final bit of news we're going to get to concerns the novel of People Among Us, George R. R. Martin, A Song of Ice and Fire. Um, the Winds of Winter, sixth book in the saga, long awaited, long in coming, don't know when it's coming out. 
he made a couple of comments about um, the Hugo Awards on his Not A Blog, which are like a sci-fi fantasy award ceremony, you know, like the Emmys, but for sci-fi fantasy books. And uh, he's just talking about it, and somebody asked him, you know, what's on tap for 2018? Is Winter Wizard going to come out? And he responded that uh, Fire and Blood is planned, which is another book he's writing. So conspicuous by its absence is Winds of Winter. This dude. We have been talking Whoa. about this book. For a long time. For as long as we've been doing the show. When, when you do a, sh a weekly show about Game of Thrones, it's going to come up a lot. Why can't the man finish a book? Because the man is busy and the book is very large and uh, the man has v many, many So now he's going to start address. two other books in addition to Winds of Winter? No. He's, he's already written this one. It's going to come out first. Okay. This kind of, uh, it's, a f it's like a history book about the Targaryens, so it's yeah. fake history. Okay, interesting. So it's like reading about the Civil War, but it never happened. Right. Fun, would you be interested in that? Possibly. Seriously? <laughs> Our next reading project? I mean, really, I don't know. Um, I, 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 I don't know if I'd like it. I don't know, if I'm reading fiction, I'd rather it be like, like read like fiction, you know? Yeah, that's true. But I don't know, it might be brilliant. But he has that planned. The point is, it's, we're not going to get it in 2018, according to this comment. Or well, the likelihood is incredibly low. Which, I mean, I, I feel like the fan community is almost over at this point. Like, there, there's not a lot of excitement when it comes up. I feel like ennui is setting in. And yeah. it would take a lot to get people pumped up again. About Woods of Winter or? Woods of Winter. Okay. So people are just over it? Because they've been waiting for that's, so long? That's the sense I'm getting from some of the fans. If any of you have any opinions on that I'd like to know. Are you still excited and hopeful or is at this point you're just give me the book or just don't talk about it? Ooh, Donna thinks that Woods of Winter has been done but he is holding back until the secret tier is fully completed. See, there, there's a go. That's a fun conspiracy theory. So then theory. they, wait, wait, what did she think? That they're going to wait and release it she until after season eight? He's already written it but he has it under a chair somewhere and they're just going to not release it until the show is over. What would be the reason behind that I Donna what would be the reason behind that <laughs> because honestly I'm not sure I really could think of one either marketing they don't want it to give they away they want anything. it to go on forever possibly that or to just sustain interest but then again because the show's already gone beyond the books right so. yeah so when you want to get it out sooner yeah I'm, I'm not think it quite holds up but it is a theory people toss around Julie thinks he's lost interest Ooh, not going to happen ever, unfortunately. It's impossible. And Emma doesn't read the books. Possibly a good um, battle plan at this point. Me either, Emma. <laughs> <laughs> Don't. Speaking of the books, usually at this point, we have yes. on um, Josh Hill to discuss more chapters of A Song of Ice and Fire. But unfortunately, Josh Hill is no longer with us. Because he went home because he got sick. But he'll be back next week. Man. Um, feel better, Josh Hill. Yeah, feel better, Josh Hill. We'll be back next week. Um, instead, uh, we are going to have on Culturist editor Cheryl Wastnard to discuss some Game of Thrones fan theories with y'all. And Josh will be back next week. Kayla, thank you very much. Thanks, Dan. <laughs> Welcome. I'm not Josh Hill. Hi, everyone. Good to be here. I thought of that Hi, he's Dan. dead bit earlier today. I'm really happy with it. I'm so proud of you for it. It was great, Dan. Good. Also, I have my mic in a pocket. I did, in too. And again. then it didn't work. That's why you wear the cardigans, and it's my pocket. what it's for. Okay, you, you, you don't care about this, but usually no, you have don't. a different kind of mic, <laughs> and that's different, and it's strange. Anyway, let's yes. talk fan theories. Okay, so there was a huge Game of Thrones fan theory about the Endgame that came out, I think, only a couple of days ago, and it, really, it blew up. It was on Reddit. Absolutely. Time wrote an article about it. Cultures is going to have a big breakdown of one of the big moments from the theory tomorrow morning. A lot of folk picked it up. Yes. And um, I think it's because it was new, it was unexpected, it was mm -hmm. well thought out. Cheryl, what does this new fan theory from a Redditor named the Triple B uh, have to say? What do you lay it out for us? Everyone makes theories about what the Triple B stands for, okay? Um, but anyway, let's talk the theory. So, I've bullet pointed out the big things of it. <laughs> You're right. So basically the Night King's plan is that he kind of jukes everyone and doesn't actually attack Winterfell. He goes and whirls around in King's Landing. Well, I think it was that he sends the army of the dead there. Right. 
So but they're then, all like, think they're fighting a big battle, but really. But, but really, the big thing is happening down in King's Landing, and Cersei becomes a member of the undead. Right, which, because the Night King would fly his big dragon down there, what? bypassing Winterfell, and which just would explain the everybody. King's Landing fire. So well, that's yeah. fair. Um, Jaime kills undead Cersei. After she's been turned. Yes. yes. And joins the Night Watch afterward as the 1,000th commander and kind of restores glory to the Night's Watch, I believe is the wording used. Uh, randomly, Sweet Robin becomes a decent fighter. I mean, some of it was sure. just like whatever. Yeah. Um, let's see. The Golden Company gets also turned. And they begin King's Landing when this happens. King's Landing. There's no clue gain bowl because... Nope, because no. Um, and John and Daenerys have a baby or babies, and Daenerys dies in childbirth and slash or after childbirth, leaving John alone yet again. <laughs> Very appropriate for Valentine's Day, everybody. Um, so John is forever alone, but at least he has a baby to raise, or babies. And apparently the dragons all die in battle, but then we find out that they laid eggs. Is everyone losing their minds over this theory? Yes. I mean, again, it blew up in a big way, mm -hmm. um, so it was very popular. It was yes. interesting. Um, I want to hit two points. I like two things about it. I love the it idea down. that the army of the dead will go to Winterfell, mm -hmm. right, and they'll fight them all, and they'll mm -hmm. probably like win, but it will be hollow because Night King will have flown around towards King's Landing. I think it's really right. fun. I think it's unexpected. I think like that could actually happen. Yes. That kind of doesn't fit with John meeting Cersei in King's Landing, but whatever. Um, I, I, I think it's fun. I think it's an interesting mm -hmm. kind of twist that could actually be pulled off. Yeah. Um, what do you think of that bit? I think it'd be unexpected. I mean, I think you're right that it doesn't really do well with the whole John and Cersei meeting, but then again, the Triple B posted this to our Game of Thrones, not our Free Folk, which is where a lot of the spo Yeah, it's to our Game of Thrones. This is all just theories, spoilers, true. rumors. None of this is true, but it's yeah. fun to talk about. But it's fun, to, but it's fun anyway. So I think that that kind of might throw a damper on this theory, but at the same time, I still like the idea of the Night's King just kind of continuing to surprise everyone and do these big, giant, evil things. Like, we need to understand that he's the big, big villain of the whole series. Because, I mean... Killing I, a dragon is I want to be enough. surprised. I want to be surprised. Right. I feel like that would surprise me. Right. And give, like, a twist for the final thing. Right. I feel, I don't know, there's part of me that's wondering if it's just going to feel rote, that they're going to get the Winterfell, they're going to lose, they're going to get to King's Landing... It's going to burn, and then some will die, someone will live, and it'll, it'll be over. Yeah. But that would be a fun uh, twist. Exactly. The whole idea of Daenerys getting pregnant and dying on child has actually been around for a while. It has. Um, what do you think of that? Um, I'm going to go in depth more about this later, but um, my kind of take on it is it, feel, it would feel kind of, to borrow a word from you, Dan, cheap. Ooh. Um, I don't know. I just I feel like letting Jon Snow kind of take over at the end of everything would be too expected and normal. Like, of all the characters that we have kind of left, Jon Snow is kind of the most traditional hero. Right. Um, and that, you know, he's got this mysterious origin, he's secretly a prince, like, all that good stuff. Like, that makes him kind of a boring traditional hero. And that's not to say that Daenerys isn't her own kind of based in some fantasy kind of tropes definitely of her is. own. But at least, you know, she's more interesting in a sense than John is. It's she's had a lot to, I mean, she's, you know, hatched dragons at, at the very least, and she's had kind of this different journey that seems like it could end. It would feel kind of cheap to be like, you know, she survived all this other stuff up until now, and then, oh, no, just kidding. She gets killed by babies. Yeah, just killed by babies. I, I'm, I'm not sure I agree with you about John. I, I do kind of agree about mm -hmm. it would be, it, it would somehow it feels unsatisfying to end Daenerys' yes. eight season journey in a, that way. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know why, but that theory has been pretty popular for a while. It, it's been popping around. Well, like I've seen it in a bunch because, of different forms. I think it's because of, you know, how quickly she, you know, how there was this big emphasis in season one when she lost Rego and like Miriam mm. Asdor was like, you're not going to have another child again until oh, all Mary. of these impossible things happen, so it's kind of big. And then in season seven, they, they brought up the I can't, can't have, have kids thing a lot, lot, which means she's going to get, I mean, I, I, she's going to get pregnant, absolutely. Absolutely. It's ha happening now, guys. Just By the just rules of mentioning it. things on television like, <laughs> three or more times, yep. it's going to happen. Yep. But, yeah, I think, you know, this whole idea of Daenerys becoming pregnant again has kind of been gestating to make the mm -hmm. inevitable terrible pun. 
um, for a long time. So I think that is definitely like concrete. But again, like I said, it feels kind of just unsatisfying that, oh, we're just going to kill her off that way. So, I, I, I don't, don't think I'd like it. But I'm then again, it would be an unexpected turn. And he, Martin does like those. Eh. I do think, because remember, Martin told them the ending a while back. Right. And I think they'll stick to that, to the big parts of it. Yeah. And if that was part of it, I can see it coming to pass. Right. Yeah, I, I think it would be a little unsatisfying. But then again, yeah, it, 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 it's all in how they do it. It's true. Does anybody out there think that's a good idea, that Daenerys should die in childbirth? That would be a satisfying ending for her? I can't really think about it. Ooh, there seems to be a discussion about a gentleman who doesn't think much of our show. Oh. But, you know, we accept all viewpoints here. Think what it's you true. like, sir. Oh, oh Dan. And so we'll have to find out um, in the coming months and days. Spoilers. Come on, spoilers. Come through We're getting us. plenty. It'll be fine. Oh, yeah. We're not worried. And next week, Josh Hill will be back to discuss more about A Song of Ice and Fire, Game of Thrones, going through it chapter by chapter. Mm -hmm. I think we're on the bit where Catelyn arrests Tyrion, so it's heating up. Getting and toasty. hope you get better, Josh. I'm sorry you have the yes, flu better, or cold Josh. or smallpox or whatever you got. <laughs> smallpox. And Cheryl, thanks <laughs> no for joining us. No grayscale. Hopefully no grayscale. Yes. Hopefully there's some giveaways in the near future. Cheryl, thanks for joining us. Good to be here, Dan. Thanks and so much for having me. we will see you all next Wednesday at 4 o'clock p.m. Central Time here on the Winter is Coming Facebook page. Have a wonderful Valentine's Day. Don't kill anyone.